Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my series on my Unraid server rebuild using the Define 7 XL case. Today we've got some new fans coming in that we're going to get installed in the case. These fans are power managed so that you know we can kind of rev up the speed, bring it down depending on what the system's doing. Hopefully we're going to be able to control all of that in Unraid. We actually might have gotten a motherboard that doesn't support the feature, so we'll be digging into that later. Hopefully we're all clear there. We're also gonna be working on moving my DVD drive into the server just for some testing purposes. Eventually we do want a Blu-ray 4K drive in there, but we wanna make sure everything's gonna work the way we think it's gonna work. And we're also gonna work on getting moved over our card reader, which we're gonna have a replacement coming, an actual proper one in a few more weeks, but we kinda wanna make sure everything's set up right, everything's gonna work the way we think it's gonna work, and just try to get some of the kinks worked out today. That way everything's good for the future. But first we need to get some measurements taken for our custom power cables. Make sure that we can get power to all of our SATA drives, to our DVD drive and everything else that needs power. So let's dive in there. Let's get some measurements taken down and uh, let's get that email sent off so we can get those cables made. To figure out how long of cables I needed, I did a bunch of measuring. One of the first things I measured was from the PSU to the most common area that the cables would be routed to. This basically got the cables out of the PSU area to the back of the case. From there I then measured out to where the cables would go up the drive bay as we'll call it. I decided to have four power groups total. I divided it up into four since I've got four SATA slash peripheral headers on the PSU itself. Also so that I didn't overload any one cable. Each one supporting up to five drives. The first group would support five drives going up the storage area. The next group would be the next four drives and the DVD drive. After that would be the bottom storage group with the four drives, and one more SATA connector to go up to the fan controller. The last group would be for the five SSDs that the case can support. We've got everything pretty well measured out now. I think I've about figured out how I want the wires. Um, I do need to make sure that I, I'm hoping that they'll be able to wire everything in such a way that we don't have to run things upside down because right now these cables are essentially running upside down where like for this cable right here going to these four drives for this cable here going to these four drives we've got you know it comes up from our PSU this is the termination of our cable we don't want to be terminating at the bottom though, we want to be terminating at the, at the top of our stack. So hopefully, um, hopefully the wiring is able to be done, I can't imagine it can't, but hopefully it can be done in such a way that we can have this flipped where we don't have to go down. So the four sections that I talked about just to show them, we'll have one down here for these four drives, plus we're actually going to come from this drive and bring that to our fan header. The next section going to our SD card or our SSDs. Um, so we can mount two here. It looks like we can mount a max of three on the other side in here. So that would give us one, two, three. Then we've got five drives coming up to here. We'd have the first five. Then we have the next four plus power to our DVD drive. All right, so we've gotten that email sent off. It took a little bit to get done, but it's done. We're gonna go ahead, we're still waiting on our new fans. So we're gonna go ahead and get these fans moved up top. We're gonna to move this fan up top also. So those will just be up top helping to exhaust air. Um, we're gonna have fans that are gonna be able to pull in more than enough air through the front. Uh, I actually realized while trying to help my sister with her computer build that the fans I got, they're actually the industrial version. Since they are power managed fans, hopefully they aren't excessively loud. We might have to switch to the non-industrial version that will be uh, significantly quieter. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Anyways, um, let's get these moved. You know, the more I think about this though, the more ridiculous it seems. Um, I want this to be 
quiet more than I want it to have super good cooling. I mean, it's the fans I'm putting in are going to have ridiculously good airflow as it is. Like, I don't think I really need to move these to the top. So we'll try it first without the fans in the top. And if I notice my temperatures still aren't quite where I want them to be, which is going to be basically impossible. Um, or if you know down the road when we've got a lot more drives in this thing, if it looks like it's kind of toasty, then maybe we'll do something about it. But the nice thing is, you know, all of these panels, I mean, aside from my glass one, obviously, all the panels on these Define cases, let's just pop this top one off, all of these things have like this sound dampening material in them and stuff. So the back panel has this, the top panel has it. If I had the solid side panel for the, uh, we'll just say the open side, it would have this too, which probably does quite a bit for, you know, knocking down the sound, especially with like a server build. I don't, I don't know why I got the glass panel. It's kind of fun. It's kind of cool. Ultimately though, I'll probably swap it back because um, right now I can keep this in my closet and the closet space works well, but in the future, I don't necessarily know where I'll be able to put this. And if it happens to be in a more public space or in like more just an office space or something, I'm definitely going to want to try to keep it as quiet as possible, especially when I'm doing stuff like recording and whatnot. You know, you don't, you don't want the sound of 40 decibel fans in the background. So a few reasons why we're changing the fans. I mean, the fans that it comes with are decent. These are the Dynamic X2 GP14s. So, I mean, they're 1,000 RPM fans. They, they're rated at like 18.9 decibels, which they're, they really aren't that loud. Um, I think they're around 60 cubic feet a minute. For me, one, it's a bummer that they aren't PWM fans and it looks like my motherboard might not have what it needs for Unraid to be able to use PWM anyways So we might have to come up with some janky kind of fan curve ourselves But I really want PWM fans in here just for when it's like really not doing anything It can just kind of spin all the way down. So I've got like five discs in here So we've got three that are usually spun up two of them just aren't doing anything right now I think cause they're full and whatever's on them. I'm never accessing but the other three two of them seem to sit at Like 89 degrees Fahrenheit, which is fine. Like they seem fine But then I've got a third which must be one sandwiched in between all of these that sits at like hundred and nine and it's just always sitting there at 109. So, you know, I figure let's just get some more airflow by it. It seems like it's a fine temperature, but you know, I just like it to run a little bit cooler. So these are probably the ones I should have gotten. So they're PWM fans. They run a little bit higher at 1500 RPM. They've got about the same airflow though, if we just convert that. So without the low noise adapter, we're running a little bit louder at almost 25 decibels with a uh, acoustical, well, with a airflow of 80, just about 85 cubic feet a minute. Um, about the same static pressure, I think. So about on par with the included fans, but um, since we got the industrial ones, the industrial ones are completely mad. So they go anywhere from 500 RPM all the way up to 2000. But these things airflow is like insane. We get all the way up to, for these ones, the max airflow is all the way at 105, almost 106 cubic feet a minute. So the airflow is way higher. It's basically double the included fans. Our acoustical noise is also like an entire 10 decibels higher. It's actually more than 10 decibels higher, but our static pressure is also way higher. So most fans, especially like most radiator fans and stuff, are somewhere around two millimeters, um, which I, I can't convert that on the fly into Pascals. Anyways, around two millimeters of H2O pressure stuff, bang. Um, these ones are at 4.18, so the air that these things are going to be putting out should be able to quite easily 
get through the spaces between our drives and stuff. It's probably going to be, I mean, at full RPM, they'll obviously be decently loud. I don't think they'll be as loud as the, uh, the unholy server, but yeah, it'll, uh, it'll be something. <laughs> All right, so actually in order for us to continue, we're going to have to turn everything off. Um, part of why we're doing this is I want to get this moved into a new case um, because quite frankly, I hate this case. And you know, it, it's in part, this is the drive, this is the card reader I have right now. I do have the new one on order, but it's like two or three weeks out. Um, I do kind of want to start Playing with things though, playing with things means that this video might take a long time to get onto my hardware that I need it on to actually edit it. Anyways, the computer, when it's in the new case, is going to be on the desk anyways. So even though this thing's a monstrosity and a pain in the butt, the only way I'm going to get stuff out of it is if I move it now. So I may as well move it now, start getting used to it being up there, and yeah. Alrighty, alrighty. And, oh, whoa, that's more boxes than I was expecting. That's mine, that's not mine, that is my roommate's. All right, so we've got the desktop moved, we've got our new fans, we've got our DVD drive and our media thing, which I guess already had a mount for it, so I guess I didn't need to buy a new one, but I probably will need a second one for the other case. So, I guess it's good that I bought another anyways. But, let's go ahead and get this opened. Alright. So, as I was saying, we have these Noctua. We've got three of them. These industrial PPC 2000 fans. Um, I think the IP67, I mean, that usually has to do with like water and dust resistance. I don't know if that's related or not, but maybe it is. Anyways, 140 millimeter PWM fans. We've got three of these, four of these, I lied, four. Um, so that'll go in the back, three in the front. We have splitter cables for our fans. I guess we only really need one right now. Um, and our bracket. So we're going to go ahead and mount the first one on the back just to make sure we get everything facing the right direction. We know how to get it to work, see how loud it is. Um, you know, just that sort of stuff. So we're going to go ahead and mount this first one back here and uh, we'll see how that goes. All right, we got on the BIOS, yay. Okay, um, so there are, there are a few things I want to double check because we want to be able to hopefully have Unraid detect our drives and what temperatures they're at and based on the temperature of the drives tell the fans how fast they should be spinning. That was looking somewhat questionable in our preliminary looking um, with Unraid. I wasn't finding the IPMI stuff. Uh, I'm not finding IPMI information for this motherboard on Gigabyte's website, which is unfortunate. I may have made a mistake without realizing I made a mistake, but uh, hopefully I'm just missing something. All right, so after scouring through the BIOS and the different settings I have available there, unfortunately I was not able to find any temperature sensors that are actually going to be of use to us. Um, I don't know if Unraid is still gonna have something in there and what settings I might need to set the fans to to be able to access that if I even can. But that is this fan at max speed, which surprisingly is not as loud as I was anticipating. So that's pretty good. I mean, that's all the way up at like 2000 RPM. 
that's a whole 23 liters a minute of air that it's moving and uh, that, that's moving a lot of air um, that's pretty impressive right there this motherboard doesn't have a header for an extra thermostat like I can't just grab one or two and plug them in and stick them between the drives so that's not gonna work um, you know the BIOS doesn't seem to get the drive information to know how hot each one is it looks like that's more an OS level thing so I'm running out of ideas here oh yeah wow yeah that that's that moves that definitely moves some air all right so just as a note i'm starving so i'm going to eat something but we've basically closed the case all back up you can ignore those fans you can really barely hear it with it all closed up i mean you still kind of can and if i ramp it all the way up you can but this case really does such a good job especially at the lower rpms of just deadening the sound. If we put another of like the same that's on the back panel on this side, it would be so quiet. Anyhow, we're at 45 degrees Celsius right now. We're just gonna let it sit in the BIOS, so not really doing anything, but we're gonna let it sit for a while. We're gonna get some food, come back, we'll check where our temperatures are at now that we've got air actually flowing through the case. And uh, then we're gonna try and move everything back and check out what we may or may not be able to do to uh, further improve our temperatures. All right, so it's been at least 30 minutes, probably close to an hour at this point. And, uh, well, good news, bad news. I mean, we haven't gone up in temperature, but we haven't gone down either. Which I thought for sure would go down a little bit, but uh, maybe 45. I mean, I think 45 is fine. I'd like it cooler, but I don't have a cooler this big on my CPU in here. I mean, we just got we just got the stock cooler on there, and this one's got like, yeah, I don't even know what the TDW of this is like. It's it's insane, and yeah, it barely fits. All right, guys. So jumping on the server here, we have our Make MKV Docker container here. This is what we're going to use to rip from our DVDs straight to our movies folder. You can set that as you want. I'm just gonna put things straight into movies and sort it from there. Alternatively, you could rip straight to your cache or maybe even a disc that's not part of your array. That way you can sort it later and you don't need to worry about any unnecessary writes or anything. This is just how I have it set up for now. Anyhow, we come into our make MKV container. We need to edit it. We can see that we need to find where our, what device our optical drive is, and we need to add those to the Docker container. So if we pop over to tools and we go into system devices, it took me a minute to find mine, but if we scroll down, we see here we've got our CD DVD, our Asus writer is at dev SR0. So coming back, we go to advanced view we come down to our extra parameters. We add device dev sr0. Now the first time I did this, I wound up seeing something like this where things kind of bugged out. It wasn't quite working. It didn't. We still weren't getting our drive to show up. So we come back, we look at our logs and in our logs, we will find So right here, it says looking for usable optical drives, found optical drive dev SR0 and dev SG7. Now I got curious when I saw that. And so doing a little digging, went ahead, logged into my server here and we went, if we, if I can type right, we go into dev, we list our devices. We do see that we indeed have an SR0 and we also have an SG7. So to get a little more information about those, I went ahead and did an LSL. I did SR0. I see that that is our DVD-ROM. And then SG7. Now one of the things that I noticed is these have two different permissions. So I noticed a difference here in the permissions. These both do seem to go back to the CD-ROM. I only have one CD-ROM, so it's got to go back to the same place. 
Basically, what this means is this is a block device and this is a character device. Now, I can't say I'm familiar enough with the Linux Unix system to be able to explain this, but as it turns out, we need both of them. So if we come back to our Docker, we edit our make MKV again. Let's go back to advanced view. Add our second device. our case it's sg7 go ahead and add that it finishes now if we come in here we see once it refreshes refresh boom there's our asus reader writer dvd drive so you see our os device name we got sr0 everything's working so we should now be able to throw a disk into this and we should be able to rip it now this is something of a proof of concept that I'm working with. I just want to make sure that this does work. Um, one of the things I'm very curious about is if the 4K ripping abilities will still work within this Docker container. So in the next little bit, we will get a 4K friendly drive for ripping and stuff. And we will be testing that out and making sure that works. But as long as this does work, this makes it super convenient for us to rip DVDs straight to our straight to our Plex server. Because, you know, from here I can throw a disk in, I can choose exactly where I want it to go. You know, we can come into our files, or we can go into our preferences, we can set where that's going to go. And, uh, you know, basically all I've got to do is pop the disk in, tell it to run, and I can just forget it. It's not running on my active machine, it's not something in the background. Um, there are settings within the container itself that when you put in a disk, it just automatically rips it. So realistically, you could just drop disks in and let it rip. I hope there, I don't know if there is a way, but it'd be great if there was a way that you could find out to send yourself notifications when a disk rip finishes. Because you could go about your day and then just get like a push notification or a notification to your Slack, whatever you're using to get notifications from your Unraid server about when a disk is finished. All you've got to do is go in, take it out, put the new one in, hit shut, rips it over, and you just sort the stuff later. But then it's all in an area, in a place where it's easy to manage. You've already, you know, you've already got it ripped and stuff. It's already basically there, so... Really convenient, really nice. We'll go ahead and uh, try this out real quick, make sure that it really works. All right, so I just popped in a movie that I've got sitting around. I only have a few here, but I've got one. We just popped it in. Let's see if it's gonna recognize. All right, so we've got Howl's Moving Castle, 7.83 gigabytes. We're accessing, processing titles. So it looks like this is going to take a hot minute. Um, it looks like it might take a many hot minutes. So we'll uh, we'll come back to this once it finishes. We'll actually we'll let this run. So one of the cool things that apparently this Docker is able to do is we have an option down here where we can automatic disk ripper, which basically what I believe this means is when we put in. A, uh, when we put a disk in, it automatically starts the ripping. Um, we can also do an automatic eject. So basically, the only thing you'd actually have to do is put your new disk in, close it, it would go, it'd eject, put the new disk in, close it, it'd go, and then eject. Um, I think, so this is the same kind of feature that I want to make for a docker that would be able to, I'd be able to mount my... Uh, my media drives too so we can oh look it finished so if we come over here we can see we have our cf card reader our xd card our sd card ms msd so we've got these different card readers that we have access to and one of the things that i'd really like to add is a way that you know when i plug in my sd card whether it's got photos on it whether it's got videos i've got a docker that can scan that drive grab all of the photos and copy them to a folder and then grab all the videos and copy them to a folder. And the fact that the make MKV Docker is essentially able to do this leads me to believe I should be able to come up with a way 
that this would be possible. And that would seriously help streamline, you know, the offloading of content from my camera and such. I think it'd be a great feature. And I think even in industry, I don't, I'm not aware of anything like this in like the actual film industry and stuff. I think it would, uh, as long as we can make it cross compatible, I think it could be a really great feature. So let's get back over here. We can see we've got, oof, we've got a hot bunch of stuff. Okay, so um, most of these I think are all special features. I'm not super concerned about these. Oh, that's Japanese. I'm not really worried about Japanese audio. So let's see here. We got, we don't really need. I'm never going to watch this in Japanese. I'm not going to watch it in French, so let's not worry about those. So we've got 25 chapters, 5.5 gigabytes. Let's go ahead and pull this. It is going to put it in. So our outputs folder is mapped to our movies. So it's going to drop it in here. Um, you should be able to customize this a bit. We're just going to do Howl's Moving Castle for now. I'll have to revisit how Plex really wants everything labeled later and make sure that that all, oops, goes right, but oh, bring it back. All right, uh, okay, that's fine. But uh, we should just be able, it does not exist. You want to create it? Yes. And we're off to the races. Boom, and there we go. Copy is wow. complete. So that took 15 minutes. I have an older DVD drive. It's not the newest thing in the world. We will have a much newer one eventually, but that did get it done. So let's go ahead. Let's drop into Plex. We'll come over to our movies, which should show us should show us what's on our server. We're gonna to have to look into that. So obviously we don't have everything sorted right on the back end yet, but you can see we do have like cars. I don't have cars on this. I don't have Madagascar 2 on this. I don't know where it's getting this information from. Howl's Moving Castle is the only actual movie I have on there. So that's weird. But we can come over here. We can see we can choose from our English subtitles. Our video, because it's a DVD, it's in SAD 480p, but that's okay. It is there with our 5.1, and uh, yeah, you know, if we play this, we can see that it is working in all of its 480p glory. Ooh. So, awesome. Beautiful. So it does have sound. I'm not capturing uh, desktop sound right now, but uh, yeah, it's working just fine. So sweet, makes it easy, guys. All right, guys, this video is already excessively long, so we're gonna wrap it up there. Thanks for coming by. I hope you found it informative. Hope you found it useful. Hope you've gotten some ideas for your server, or if you're using the Define 7XL case, I hope this helps you figure out exactly what you're wanting to do with it. I did get an email back just now from mod diy they have informed me they've told me which cables to buy and where to fill out how to specify you know what it needs to be and everything i'll include that link in the description below if you're needing custom cables for this case or any other cases be sure to check them out they're able to do custom cables as part of the ordering process they've got a spot that you can fill out what you're needing they're able to custom make those and get those sent out to you so if you're needing cables be sure to check them out Otherwise, stay tuned for part five, where we will hopefully be putting in a 4K friendly drive into our server and uh, hopefully installing new cables. Until then, so long.